G'day guys and welcome back to another episode with me, Guy Tries, in our survival Let's Play series. This is episode 7, and as you can see, I am standing on top of the monolith that we had made in episode 6. If you guys haven't seen that episode, I recommend you go ahead and check that out before continuing with this one. But yes, guys, while we're on that topic, I want to thank everyone for the support in the previous episode, all the new subscribers, and all of the likes that we've received, and especially all the new comments. Thank you so very much for that. And speaking about comments, today's episode is partly inspired by a commenter under the name of Jacopo, Jacopo Marchesi. <laughs> I apologize if I did get your name wrong, but they pretty much said that we should focus on smaller farms with smaller builds and we should tour them. And I think that is exactly what we are going to do today. We're going to make smaller builds and we're going to start connecting all of these builds together very slowly, but connecting them we will do. These two farms will help us with traveling for the rest of the series. And that is, of course, to do with some rockets. We're going to make a gunpowder farm and also a sugarcane farm. And we're going to make them quite small. And we're going to keep this video quite small. I don't know if you guys have noticed the last couple of episodes have been quite long. Well, actually, the last few episodes have been over 30 minutes. And I know that not everyone has the time to watch it. So we're going to turn it down a little bit. We're going to keep the runtime of each episode a little bit shorter. But um, yeah, what do you guys think? Do you guys like the longer episodes or maybe short episodes? Let me know in the comments down below. But first things first, we need to go ahead and make the first farm, the first component to rockets. And that of course is a gunpowder farm. We're going to make a gunpowder farm and I think the best place to put it would be inside of this monolith because there's a lot of empty space inside of here. And I think we could squeeze a nice little custom Ooh, that sounds bright. <laughs> and I think that we could squeeze a nice little custom creeper farm inside of here, both in the top section and the bottom section. As you guys can see, there are two sections and they both have a lot of empty space inside of them. So let's go ahead and make use of them in a good way. And then once we have that done and sorted, we can go ahead and make a nice little build for our sugarcane farm. This is going to be a pretty cool build. So small, but jam packed with a lot of detail. So I'm super excited. For you guys to see that one with that being said let's go ahead and get started with the first build of today so let's go ahead and crack this open let's get inside and see how much room we got to work with so then i can come up with a design for this creep farm this gunpowder farm hmm i think we could fit a couple of uh a couple of layers for the creeper farm okay i think i have an idea it might be a mix and mash of a couple of different creeper farms but um it should do the job, hopefully. <laughs> really? Let's <laughs> first try. Okay, guys, I will see you in just a moment when I've decided on what to do. And welcome back, guys, to an extreme close-up of my face. <laughs> I'm currently standing over the, well, the gunpowder farm in this little chamber of glass and trap doors, because this is where I AFK, obviously. <laughs> so we're currently AFKing. We have been AFKing for about an hour, a little bit over an hour, and I think it's time for us to go ahead and see how much profit we've made with this farm. Now, keep in mind, this farm is not exactly made to be efficient, it's just a farm that I want to that I want to squish inside of the monolith because there was a lot of empty space inside and I didn't exactly want a big creeper farm out in the open in this world. I do like to make things look a little bit pretty. So that being said, let's go ahead and let's have a look at the rates of which we got. So I've made a couple of entrances inside for this monolith and ouch. Ooh, okay, as you can see, we do have a button over here. This is one of the entrances. If we press this, this will open. These pistons will pull back this gold block and it will allow us to go inside. And if we press this one here, it will close it for us. I'm basically using this new, uh, what are they called? Copper bulbs. That's right, guys. I have installed a mod pack, by the way, that includes the new 1.21 blocks. If you guys are interested, it is in the comments down below. 
or it is in the uh, description box. Check it out. But yes, this bulb does act as a T flip flop. So if I press this button here, it will not power the comparator and therefore not power the pistons because of the block on top is also not powered and vice versa. If I do press this button, the bulb will be active, the comparator will be active and therefore the pistons will also be active closing the door. Now let's head down these stairs and let's have a look at how much profit we have got. This is a little chamber here. I've made a nice little staircase with some smooth stone slabs. Nothing too special because it is the inside, so we can't really see anything. But now, let's go ahead and have a look. Ooh, okay. So we got about a stack and one in that one. A stack and five in that. Ooh, a little bit close to a stack and wow, okay. So this was just one section. So I'm guessing, I'm hoping that the other section gives us just as much. So let's go ahead and have a look. We'll make our way back up to the top and let's go and see the other entrance into this farm, which I believe is, where is it? <laughs> I believe it's right there. Yes. So it is, ouch, it is right here. And again, we do have some piston doors and we are using the same system over there with the copper bulbs and the comparator reading signal, which opens it. We don't have a button here to close it. So this one will stay open the whole time until we leave, but time for the thing that we came here for. Let's see how much we got. Ooh, another stack. Wow, okay. Not bad, and the last one. Okay, wow, that's that's not bad at all. Let's go ahead and let's have a look at the total amount that we have got. So about nine stacks and 21 pieces of gunpowder, which is, that's not bad actually for about an hour and a half. Of AFKing, that's not too bad at all, especially for me. I'm just in this world on my own, so nine stacks is uh well, it's more than enough for me to get going with the rest of my series and, and then some. So, like I did say at the start of the video, I will show you guys how I've made this farm, or more so what it looks like and how it operates. I know you can see it inside of the monolith just because it's so cramped. So let's go ahead and let's get you into my creative world where we can have a nice and closer look at this little farm and here we are guys in my creative testing world where i make most of the builds that you see in each episode in fact if i look right behind me you guys can see all of the builds that i've done so far some familiar faces in each episode but we're not focused on that we're focused on this thing right here my creeper farm now i'm not too sure if someone else has made a version of this I did make this on my own completely without looking at any other tutorials. But I'm guessing if you do know the basic principles for how creepers work and how they spawn, you probably get something similar to this. But let's have a closer look. This farm here is 11 by 11. Not too sure how tall it is. I would have to say it's about two, maybe 23 stacks. I mean, 23 blocks tall, as you guys can see. You can count it out yourselves, I'm sure. And at the very top here, we have an ether hopper clock, which is running with 26 items inside of it. And every time that it cycles through, we'll activate the redstone dust on either side and activating all the observers. As you just saw, it'll activate the note block, which then will be detected by the observer. Hitting into this block, which then will activate each dispenser on all of these levels and all of those other corners over there. Very basic and a very simple farm. If we have a look at this one here, this is just a cutaway of that. And it's pretty much just showing us what exactly I said. <laughs> Wait for a couple seconds and you'll see the water be sucked in pretty much. There we go. While that does that, let's go ahead and let's get inside and let's put a creeper inside. And let's see what happens when it gets flushed out. So when the cycle goes through, there we go. Water gets dispensed and the creeper will pretty much get pushed out and sent into the killing chamber where it will die in a few ticks. In terms of what's actually inside the farm, we do have some fences, as you can see, so then no water can flow through and the creepers can get pushed out. And also have some trapdoors as well on the inside, making sure that there is no 3x3 three three space where a, uh, a spider can spawn. And also, at the very top, we do have some trapdoors, making sure that only creepers can spawn on the inside. That is basically it. That is my creeper farm. Nothing too crazy, and I'm sure that you guys, just by looking at it, can probably feel this as well. So with that being said guys, let's go ahead and let's go back to the survival world where we will continue our little adventure. I'll see you guys there.
all right guys we are back in the survival world and i have been afking for overnight pretty much around eight to nine hours in that afk spot and we've collected around four shocker boxes full of gunpowder which means it's time for us to get to the second component of making rockets and that is these guys right here we're going to make some paper from the sugar canes but as you can see my farm is very manual and it is very small in fact okay <laughs> we have nothing inside of there but that's okay because we are going to make a fully automatic sugarcane farm and for this particular farm i'm going to be using a design by tango i'm sure you guys know who tango tech is i was going to make my own but this design is already really really good it's lossless and it doesn't use too many too many repeaters or too many observers so it'll be very very easy to make so we're going to go ahead and do that but before we do let's go ahead and breaks down some of these guys so we can use and make some rockets right now and while we're also at it we need to repair our elytra so we've got to go ahead and make some trades in the villager trading hall whoops and then we're gonna go ahead into the nether and we gotta find something that will help us for the rest of today i know what you're thinking why are we going into the nether if we need to make a sugarcane farm well let me just show you in just a second if I fly this way, just over here is where we're going to put the new build. And down this little hole, I've already started digging quite a big hole. As you can see, this is just the second layer. And over here is the bottom layer. We need to dig around, I would say, 15 levels or 15. Yeah, 15 levels, maybe more. And I've just started digging because we needed some materials before to make the creeper farm. And well, I thought I could tackle this as well. Do two things at once two birds with one stone but as you can see ouch <laughs> we have not made too much progress it does take a lot of time especially with a beacon so that is what we're going to fix now we're going to go into the nether we're going to find ourselves a nice little nether fortress <laughs> a nice little nether fortress get some skulls i'm going to fight the wither and then we'll uh, make a quick work of that little hole there and then we'll build ourselves a little farm a nice cool build the little building on top tying these three buildings together and also we might add in a little path just to connect everything as well but yes that is the plan so i'm going to go ahead and first repair my elytra wings and then we'll uh we'll get cracking so let's go ahead and do that and i'll see you guys in the nether Alright guys, so we have made it into the nether fortress. Now I don't know if you can tell, but I did turn up the brightness for the, uh, the nether dimension. I'm sure it will help both you and I. It is quite dark in here with these shadows, so I did turn it up. Hopefully that does suit you guys. But we're in here, and it's time for us to go ahead and find some of these wither skeletons. And hopefully not die to them. This is quite a big nether fortress, so hopefully we can get a lot of drops from these guys here might take some time last time i did do this oh blaze whoa 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 did <laughs> this did take me a an hour or so just because my luck it's not that great but we should go ahead and try to find as many of these skeletons as we can so far oh there they are don't do it okay so the way i like to do this is i like to uh make a little section off like that that way we can only see their legs and we can only attack them when we want to come back for another one bang did it drop anything no nope. <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and let's bait the other ones in i did see a lot there they are let's go ahead and check them out oh there's quite a few in here as well i'm gonna go ahead and block these guys off and let's put that little barrier up let's get these guys oh there's three come on boys oh there's four yep perfect perfect are they following no just two that's okay do them one at a time hopefully these guys will be able to uh get me some that's no okay well at least we're getting some coal <laughs> okay so i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can find these three skeletons i mean the three skulls and then i'll see you guys in just a moment okay see you then
Okay, so we're back at home base, and as you guys can see in my inventory, I actually managed to get to six with the skeleton skulls, which is awesome. We've also got some golden apples with our bow, and we've got a pretty, uh, pretty well-fitted sword, so we should be okay. This is not hardcore, so it shouldn't be too bad when we fight this guy. We shouldn't take too much damage, and I don't think we will die. Hopefully we don't. And speaking of fighting the wither, we are going to do it in my mining area that I had set up ages ago just under the starter base so we're gonna go all the way down have a nice little area already dug out so shouldn't have to do too much work holy moly i forgot that this thing goes so far down <laughs> okay so oh it's not well lit we should light this place up what i will do is i will put my bed right here in case i do die <laughs> in case i do die we have uh, a place to come back to so Let's go ahead and get ready. I don't think we'll need some strength potions. And I don't think we should... We should be okay. We don't need to go too far away. Once we get it started, it should be pretty easy. I haven't fought the wither in a while. So I'm not too sure if what I'm saying is actually true. But let's go ahead and make a nice big hole here. And let's get it started. This is exciting. I have not done this in quite a long time. And I'm really excited for a beacon. So... Let's grab these guys down. Yes, and yes. One, two, three, four, and bang. Okay, last one goes down, and whoops, we should put on this guy over here. Last one goes down, and then we'll start the fight. Do we need the axe? Probably not. Okay, here we go, guys. Woo! <laughs> Wait for the explosion. Right. Three, two, one. Okay. Oh no, that's not good. Ah, oh, it's too easy. It's too easy. And we also get to mine some couple deep slate as well. It's not too bad. Oh, he's making his way. He's making his way. I don't think my bow's strong enough. I'll be honest. Maybe we should have gone a little bit further back. This is quite dangerous. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Maybe we should have gone a bit further back. That's okay. He should be in range for a sword now. Come on, buddy. Oh no. He's tearing through this place. <laughs> well, we'll know better for the second one then. Okay, we're gonna eat a golden apple. And then we're gonna go ham. We're gonna fight him. We're just gonna hit him. We're just gonna hit him. He's gonna die after us. Come on. Easy. Please don't die. Ah! Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh, diamonds. Cool. Okay. Well, there it is, guys. We got another star. Let's go ahead and grab that. Oh, yes. We finally can get ourselves a beacon. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and collect all of this cobble deep slate. And then we are uh, we'll do that again. Alright guys, so that is all done. We got the wither down too, actually. Which means that we can go ahead and we can craft ourselves a beacon. And then we can uh, dig that really big hole. And then we can start building the final build for today. And the farm as well. So, I'm going to get cracking on that. And I'll see you guys in just a moment. And there it is, guys. This hole has now been dug. And it's all thanks to this beacon over here. We'd make short work of this. Without this beacon, we probably would have been here for a couple of hours. But with this, it did take us a little bit under 40 minutes, I think. So, not too bad at all. But now, this whole place is done. We can finally start 
making the farm first because we do need to collect a lot of sugarcane to start off with before we can actually build the rest because it's quite dependent on it because of the crafting recipes and how I've set up the actual automatic farm. So first thing we're going to do is to remove this bit here and then I'm going to start building the farm and then we'll build the actual build on top and connect the two together and then we'll have a little look and maybe we'll go into my testing world, my creative world to see uh, how everything works. But guys, you probably remember at the start of the video I did say that we'll keep this video shorter but um, having a bit of trouble doing that. I am trying my best to keep this video under 30 minutes and I will keep it under 30 minutes but it might seem a little bit short or a little bit jumpy just because I'm trying to fit things in and compact it best that I can. So if you guys could let me know in the comments down below if you don't mind the longer forms of video or you would like me to keep it under 30 minutes that would be awesome. A little bit of your feedback would definitely help with these videos and all the videos coming forward. So that being said I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to start building or else this video will actually go over 30 minutes and uh, <laughs> and then we'll have a problem. Okay, let's get let's get this going. Okay, there it is, all nice and built, and boy, it's a massive thing, as you guys can see. I've turned on the hitboxes so you can see this thing running, just so you know that it is working. Maybe we can get a good angle of everything. We are pretty far down as compared to the farm. But basically, what is happening is the observers will detect when the sugar cane grows, and when it does, it will send a redstone signal pulse all across these redstone lines, and then it will activate each and every piston, no matter how tall the sugar canes may be on each level and then it's collected in a hopper and chest. Now I would recommend looking at Tango Tech's original video, of course it's in the description down below. He goes in depth on how it works and also how to build it so go ahead and check that out. But that being said guys, now that we have the farm built and it is collecting quite a bit already, as you guys can see we've got two stacks and a half-ish. Now that it's collecting we can finally start building the rest of today's build. And boy, it's going to be a nice and awesome build, like I said. And I uh, hope you guys look forward to it. But that being said, let's get cracking. And I'll see you guys once it's all built. And then we'll have a nice little look at it, okay? Thanks for sticking around, guys. I appreciate you. And there it is, guys. The build is finally done. Today's build that we have set out to do in today's episode is finally done. And boy, did this actually take a long time. I mean, it is such a small build, but it did take me a couple of hours to make. That is because, as you can see, there is so much detail in this one. Because it's so small, doesn't mean we can skimp out on the details. So I definitely went a little bit ham on this one. This is our sugarcane farm, our sugarcane farm. House, our sugarcane shop, as you can see, denoted by that sugarcane over there and that wall. It is in between our iron farm and our villager inn. So this little area here is starting to settle in and it's starting to come together on its own. So that's fantastic. But enough of that. Let's quickly have a look at this build and then we can look at the farm. As you guys can see, I've gone ahead and also used the same block palette with the bone blocks, the sand, and also different types of stripped logs. Matching, uh, where is it? Matching our villager in. But I think, dare I say, a little bit more refined, a little bit more thought out instead of just putting them all in like that. This is a bit more random, but also not, <laughs> if that makes sense. 
I don't know if that does. And if you guys can also see, just at the very roof, we can see that it kind of gets from dark into a lighter kind of color. I did that on purpose because, well, let's look at the sun. The sun right now is currently shining pretty much right on that tippy top of that roof. So it would make sense to make that part of the roof a little bit lighter than it would on the other side. So everything else over there is dark and then it gets a little bit lighter and we've got some spruce and some oak signs which really help with the uh, the gradual transition from dark to light. So I think that was pretty cool. And also the roof color wasn't... I was a bit... <laughs> I was a bit iffy with the roof color. I never used the mangrove wood before. Not even just red in general. So I think it turned out pretty well. And again, we did use the whole gradient effect with it being lighter at the top. And as it comes down, it becomes darker and darker. That is pretty nifty. That's pretty cool. And uh, this thing pretty much turned out exactly where I want it to be. We also have some of these called them, the bamboo. We have some bamboo materials in here as well. I really wanted that to pop out. And at the same time, I didn't want to take away too much attention from the overall build. So I think we did quite well on that with these bamboo blocks to kind of blend in with the, uh, with the background. As you can see, I'm currently using the new top blocks. Like I did say before, well, <laughs> we are using a mod pack that allows us to use the 1.21 blocks, I believe. And again, it's in the description down below. And so I decided to use it in this build. And boy, I think these are probably one of my new favorite blocks. Like they are so cool. Like especially this one. What is that? And this just makes a great trim around this uh, this entire build. But yes, that's pretty much it for that. And as you can see, the stripped oak and the stripped birch and the sand and the bone blocks kind of just follow along this entire house. And again, you see it goes from dark all the way up to light to the very top as well and we have a chimney in here as well i was going to put a windmill but we have a windmill over there didn't want to overuse it so we have a nice what's that <laughs> we have a nice little chimney which kind of makes it more alive if you have a look at it you can see just the way it comes out just makes it look like someone's actually living there but let's go ahead and look inside <laughs> So this build, like I said, did take a long time and I don't want this video to go for any longer than it has to. So there is no interior. <laughs> There's no interior, but I will do one in between episodes, I promise. And then we can have another look at it. And there's also an upstairs that I'll make. Might put some ladders that take us all the way to the top. But as you can see right now, nothing in here. But if we go down here, go into this workstation. This is where the magic happens. This is where we make our rockets. I know right now, you're probably thinking, what? How does, uh, how do we make rockets in here? Well, come in here. There's a whole bunch of random, I guess you could call these pipes that we have leading into this auto craft over here. And as you can see, we have a full recipe. We have a full stack of paper and gunpowder. So it's ready and waiting to make some of these rockets for us. And we also do have some gunpowder in there and some paper in there ready for us to use because I have been testing it. And speaking of testing it, we're going to give it a try right now. And you're going to see that in this case, we're going to get some rockets in there real quick, real soon. So let's turn this on and it'll be crafting right now. And soon you shall see magic happen. There we go. It is auto crafting us some rockets, which is freaking awesome. Look at that. But of course, you can't really see anything. Not really. So let's go into my creative world where I'll show you how everything is done and then um, we'll call it a day, okay? This episode is for sure going to be over 30 minutes. I apologize, guys, but please do enjoy. All right, I'll see you guys there. All right, guys, welcome back to my creative testing world. As you guys can see, we are staring at the build right now and it is currently buzzing. It is currently working and it is currently making us some fireworks. And let's go ahead and show you how all this works. It's actually quite a simple build. We basically have a massive sugarcane farm and then we have two auto crafters we have one over here which makes the sugarcane and turns that into paper which then gets dispensed all the way up into the second crafter which is just in here we have the second crafter over here which is currently funneling through the paper and also the gunpowder which we are collecting as well speaking of gunpowder 
we have this chest over here, which pretty much collects all of the gunpowder. It is collecting it very quickly because we have a minecart hopper over here sitting on four different hoppers, which is then funneled into this dropper over here, which then gets sent up and around and then getting sent into the crafter. And everything that the crafter makes, as you can see, is falling through these little pipes as well. And that is getting sent down around and also into these droppers over here and then getting given to us over here and if you guys are wondering how i'm activating my auto crafters i just have a basic repeater clock over here and as you can see it's just got an observer looking at the clock which then pulses the crafter now if you guys don't know how auto crafters work i would recommend you go ahead and look at tutorials there's plenty online on youtube and that's exactly how i learned how to make it well I did this one on my own, but basically all you need is a clock that will constantly activate the auto crafter. But there it is, guys. That is how it works. That is my build for today. I hope that all made sense and I hope I didn't rush it. It is quite a simple build. It really is. It is just a massive sugarcane farm with two auto crafters with it. One which makes the paper and the other combining the paper and the gunpowder into rockets. And so with that being said, guys, we are now done with today's episode so let's head back into the survival world and let's say goodbye Whew. and that is today's episode guys thank you so much for watching i know it was a long one and i did say that i wanted to keep it short but today's episode just got out of hand and there's so many things that i want to show you and someone again did mention in the comments that they wanted that they wanted to see a bit more of the tour of my builds and also the redstone that i put behind it and the farms as well so that is exactly what I've done today. Let me know if you guys do like this kind of content, if this is the style of video that you like. And also, again, let me know how long you prefer the videos to be. With that being said, guys, <laughs> I've got a massive arrow in my face. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching today. If you have stuck around to the very end of this video, I want to say thank you very much. I look forward to seeing all of your comments. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. So thank you so much again. For all of your support. Until then, catch you later. Bye.